give us a, a, a good example of uh, buzz marketing. You know, I think the, the best example, I don't know if it's the best example of buzz marketing, but certainly one that's near and dear to my heart is um, how I launched the brand of, of half.com, H-A-L-F.com. And, uh, you know, I was head of marketing and publicity for, for the brand before it launched, and it was a brand that nobody knew about. It was the brand probably that no one cared about. And it launched at a time where it was just complete dot-com clutter. Uh, it was the dot-com boom, and it seemed like every third advertisement was something something dot-com. And the last thing in America that people wanted to talk about was another website that just launched. So what we really did is we created a story. Uh, and, and stories, that seven letter word stories, is really the root of all buzz. Um, because if you think that you know, someone's going to talk about your brand, let's say you're the manager of the Mer Merrill Lynch No Load Mutual Fund that launched last quarter. Are people really going to talk about that at a cocktail party? I don't think so. So what do you do as a buzz marketer? What do you do? You create a story, and you create a story using the seven buttons and, and the five most frequently written news stories in America that you know work. The media is tried and true. They write about these stories, and human beings tried and true. They talk about these things all the time. You create a story that has these basic kind of precepts you know, inside the story, and what you do is you weave the brand inside the story. And so that's what we did with Half.com. The idea and the story that we gave Americans and the media all across the world was these crazy guys who are going to launch a brand uh, and change the name of a town, Halfway Oregon, to Half.com Oregon, and put the brand on the map, literally. And it was so audacious and it was so outrageous um, you know, convincing a town to change its name, and yes, we paid them, you know, a little over hundred thousand dollars and twenty-three computers for their elementary school, and a lot of politicking, a lot of negotiating, a lot of kissing babies and shaking hands on my part. Um, things that typically don't fall within the you know kind of head of marketing you know role and responsibilities. Um, but uh, we managed to make it happen, and we got lots of attention, uh, and we got you know people talking. We got the media writing. You know, the first day that we launched the website, uh, we run the Today Show, and uh, we had a five-minute segment on the Today Show, and you really can't ask for anything better than that. And it was the media frenzy was just amazing. It was you know Australia to Austin, Texas, Czechoslovakia to China. It was. Uh, it was amazing, and you know, it also caught the attention of eBay. And 19 days after we launched the the brand and the site, uh, they called and said, you know, would you be interested in selling a piece of the company? And we said, okay. And five months later, they decided they were going to buy the whole thing, and we sold it to them for you know 300 million dollars. So, and we sold it on Buzz. Um, we created Buzz, and uh, we we created something that. Um, in a very short amount of time, didn't exist before, and uh, you know, companies that get buzz and brands that get buzz take off. Uh, suppose that uh, one of the students who's watching this video is asked to uh, go and create a buzz marketing campaign. What advice would you give them? Yeah, I think if students were to develop a buzz marketing campaign, I think at the very, very minimum, you have to go back to you know, the, you know, push the six buttons. You know, what are the six things that human beings talk about again and again and again? Human beings are very, very predictable. Um, and I think you also have to go to how to capture the media. Um, and there are five most frequently written news stories in America that the American media always, always, always writes about. And, you know, when I talk and when, when I'm on panels with people from ABC who have booked, you know, over 10,000, you know, segments in, in their career, you know, they're amazed at how kind of simple um, I've reduced to, you know, the American media. They write about these five things. So I think at the very, very heart, heart of it, and students have little time on their own, if you go back to the six buttons of what human beings talk about and the five most frequently written news stories in America, um, I think that's the best place to start. And I think you have to be honest. You have to ask yourself, is this something that will you know, can I capture attention? Is this something that will, you know, that people will talk about, or is it just, you know, another billboard on the side of a on, on the side of a wall that just clutters up America and people won't talk about? Uh, 
What are the uh, five most frequently written news stories? Uh, yeah, the five most frequently written news stories in America are, first of all, the David and Goliath story. And this story is, you know, one that basically epitomizes America from the, you know, from the days that, you know, we fought the British on the Battle of Bunker Hill. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been recounted, you know, for thousands of years. It's how David, you know, fought back Goliath and won. Um, it's also the stories of, of the unusual and the outrageous. The media loves unusual, outrageous stories. Um, case in point, the town, you know, halfway Oregon to half.com Oregon, outrageous. Um, the media loves controversy. And, you know, you put on CNBC and all you have to do is wait 30 minutes on CNBC and you'll see one equity analyst talking about Home Depot, how it's the best stock since sliced bread, and then, you know, one minute later they'll put on another equity analyst talking about Home Depot, how it's sell Home Depot, it's in the worst position ever. And the media loves to create kind of natural controversy. Um, you know, the, the other thing that uh, the media writes about all the time um, is uh, celebrity, and if you can kind of hitch your, hitch your wagon by piggybacking um, onto celebrity, maybe not, you know, hiring a celebrity for yourself, but if you could create, you know, the uh, Oliver North, you know, kind of haircut special or, you know, whatever it may be, that's, uh, you know, the celebrity that's hot in the media. And then the fifth one is exactly that. What's hot in the media already gets even hotter. Um, and if you've ever heard the phrase media frenzy, it's basically, you know, a story that's hot gets hotter because the other media outlet doesn't want to be outscooped. And it's the thing like Gary Condit, O.J. Simpson, California rolling block blackouts, uh, Elian Gonzalez. Those stories go forever and ever and ever, and the media can't seem to let go of them. Um, and those are the five most frequently written news stories in America. Mark, thank you very much.